This is News 25 with Deanna O'Donnell and Stacy Jensen. News 25, local news you can count on. News is brought to you by J.K. Nelson Law. Give them a call, 727-9900. Welcome to News 25. We're so glad you can join us here on KPVM TV and Ace Country Radio. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. I'm Stacy Jensen. It's Friday, March 18th. Hope you had a wonderful St. Patrick's Day. Well, a suspicious vehicle in a prompt neighborhood leads to the arrest of three women who are accused of stealing packages in the area. Brad Francis reports. Lena Williams, Sabrina LaPate, and Kimberly Bonnell are under arrest and facing charges after an alert Nye County Sheriff's Office deputy stopped their vehicle in the early morning hours of March 3rd. The deputy noticed a white Chrysler Sebring idling on the side of the road near West Indole Street and Yucca Terrace Avenue. In the arrest report, the officer noted that the Sheriff's Office had received reports of numerous thefts from a nearby home. As the officer's patrol vehicle got closer to the Chrysler, it took off. A sergeant on duty told the deputy the suspect vehicle in the package thefts was a white Chrysler. At at this point, the officer turned around to catch up to the vehicle and noticed several boxes on the side of the road that were not there just moments ago. The deputy stopped the vehicle near Prompt Valley Boulevard and Elderberry Street. The three women inside were identified as Williams, the driver, Bonnell, the front seat passenger, and LaPate, who was in the back seat. The deputy says he could see styrofoam and part of a torn box inside the vehicle and notes that Bonnell was covered in styrofoam. All three were removed from the car and interviewed separately. The arresting officer says all three admitted to stealing the boxes and all three readmitted to conspiring to steal the boxes prior to the theft. During a search of the vehicle, officers found a lock picking set in Bonnell's purse. Williams was placed under arrest for conspiracy to commit theft and driving with a suspended driver's license. LaPate was arrested for conspiracy to commit theft and also on a separate warrant out of another agency. Bonnell, too, was arrested for conspiracy to commit theft and possession of burglary tools. All three were transported to the Nye County Detention Center and booked accordingly. And Nye County Clerk Sandra Molino is retiring after nearly 20 years in office and will not seek re-election. So far, four candidates have entered into the race to replace her, but one of those candidates is Pahrump resident Mark Kemp. I'm running for Nye County Clerk. You know, Sam Merlino, she's retiring after 20 years of service, and uh, knowing that, I decided to come out of retirement and step up to serve our community as a Nye County Clerk. There was a lot of concerns about uh, what's going on in our country and with our elections. And with my experience and uh, dedication to the community, I've decided that it's time to step up and serve the community by, as the clerk. You know, it's been uh, a long time since somebody else has been in that job, so you want to make sure you have the, the right person doing the work. And I believe I'm the right person for that job. Tell me about your experience. Well, I started out as a CPA, and then I worked for British Petroleum for 11 years, and I worked in London and was responsible for their financial reporting and their worldwide oil business. And then when I finished up with BP, I was their controller of their Alaskan oil operation. I ended my career working for a forensic audit firm where I was director of audit operations uh, for their Americas division, and my clients were Apple and Pepsi and Pfizer, and our job was to find mistakes and get their money back and it was a real challenging job because you had to really know what you're doing. You had to get your documentation straight because when you submit a million dollar bill to Apple, they want to make sure you got the, the story straight. I'm going to bring those skills to the Nye County Clerk's Office. There's a lot of concern about voting and we want to encourage people to vote. And they've heard so much bad press about the voting machines and there are a lot of concerns about any kind of system where you don't have total control over it. So the, the way to do that is to go back to the paper ballot process. And you know I've got experience in the old days of working with paper accounting systems. So it'll be an easy transition for me to give the voters the confidence that they know that their vote's gonna count. I've been a resident here for eight years and it's been the best experience of my life. And they're gonna take me out of here feet first. So I really love this place. They can find uh, more about the campaign at Mark Kampf, NV, that's M-A-R-K-K-A-M-P-F-N-V.com or you can call me at 775-990-5339. I'd love to hear from you. And the other candidates for Nye County Clerk are Ian Bain, Andrew Hackervalli, and Daryl Lackey. The primary election is set for June 14th. 
Well, a Perump family is holding on to hope that someone can help them find their lost dog. Gigi Murphy tells News 25 two of their dogs got loose in mid-February. One was found two weeks later and is back at home. The other is still out there somewhere, so the search continues. So one night they ran off. Um, they typically don't run off overnight, but it was one of the nights that we had a really bad windstorm, and I think they couldn't find their way back because they couldn't find their smell. And so they ended up way on the south side of the valley. Um, the next day, uh, a guy showed me a picture of them on his um, doorbell camera. And so I knew that they were on um, Mallard, way over there. So we were searching over there for a while with nothing. And of course, at that point, I peppered the valley with um, you know flyers. And I can't even believe the support I got off of Facebook with everybody sharing over and over um, pictures of my dogs. and. You know, every couple of days I was updating their pictures and looking at the shelters in Vegas and Barstow and everywhere I could possibly. And then all of a sudden one day, um, 16 days later, um, Joe Opetik, um called me because Onyx wandered into his garage. Oh. And he called me and I was zoomed over there and he, poor guy was emaciated and I got him home, got him to the vet. He's um, doing really well now, but unfortunately we couldn't find Bender at that time and we've still been uh, searching for him. This morning even, um, I was called over to Turner. Um, someone said that they had found Bender. I zoomed over there and unfortunately it was not my dog, but fortunately we found, you know, some other homeless dog. He was a pit bull that was Brindle, so I can see why people would mistake that. I've gotten other sightings and I've zoomed over and saw the dog and some, sometimes some people just see a dog and they call and it's completely not yeah. even the same dog, <laughs> but I don't care. I want to, I want to check out every opportunity. What's different about Bender? He has a dog tail because he's a boxer. And the second thing is most Brindles don't have white socks or white on their face and he has all of those. I try to get back with every single person that um, contacts me through Facebook or Messenger. And in fact, my daughter, I, I, she's like my my uh, campaign manager. She's been helping me with everything because it's so much, you know, and looking and hours and hours of searching online and, and stuff. And sh uh, she tries to keep everybody updated if I can't. And we try to get back with everybody. Um, and if we don't, please message me again because I'm not ignoring you. It's just overwhelming. What is the phone number and Facebook page if people have a bender sighting? Okay, my phone number is 775-513-2118. Again, my name is Gigi Murphy, and my Facebook account is under Gigi Murphy, and it's spelled G-E-G-E-M-U-R-P-H-Y. Uh, we should mention that Gigi is offering a $1,000 reward for Bender's return here at KPVM-TV. We always post when people have lost animals and stuff, We're really hoping that uh, we can find any of them. And, of course, uh, Bender um, may be still out there. I know I've spent a few hours out there looking myself. For more information, go to Gigi's Facebook page. News 25 will return right after this. You're watching News 25, the most recognized and farthest reaching local news in Nye County. News 25, local news you can count on. This segment is brought to you by Higher Society Smoke Shop in Las Vegas. Call 702-982-2300. Call 702-982-2300. A big honor for a Pahrump veterinarian, Dr. Suzanne Cervantian of All Creatures Animal Hospital. She's being recognized as the best of the best. A representative from the Pahrump Valley Chamber of Commerce presented the award to Cervantian and her staff. Uh, my name is Paul Healy. I'm the treasurer of the Pahrump Valley Chamber, and I'm here to present the annual award for Pahrump's Best Veterinarian. And I'm proudly present said uh, uh, award for the year 2021 to this year's recipient, Dr. Z, Dr. Suzanne Zervantian of uh, All Creatures. And uh, there you go. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we and appreciate uh, your support mm -hmm. and understanding, of, especially during these tough times the last couple of years. And we, uh, the, the chamber does this on an annual basis, uh, not consistently with COVID, of course, but each year we do have this and we post the uh, uh, request of our members and anybody interested uh, to, to cast their vote. And you came out on top. So congratulations again. Thank you. Yay. Yay. 
Well, that's it. We really appreciate this. We're honored to have this award. Um, we've been serving the community here in um, Perum for almost 15 years, all Creatures Animal Hospital. Um, the last few years, especially the last two years, have been especially challenging uh, with keeping enough team members on board, uh, staffing issues, either people out sick or just trouble finding good team members. So we're only open four days a week right now. Congratulations once again, Dr. Z. Well, it is Sleep Awareness Week, and if you're having trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, you're not alone. Me too. <laughs> In fact, research shows sleep disorders affect as many as 60 to 70 million adults here in the United States. Well, sleep issues are very common in our society, and a few of the most common sleep disorders that we diagnose in the sleep center would be sleep apnea and insomnia. These are disorders that are highly prevalent and where there are treatments uh, that are effective that can lead to improved quality of life. Dr. Nancy Foldvery is a sleep specialist with Cleveland Clinic. She says sleep plays a big role in a person's overall health, which is why it's important to make sure you're getting a good night's rest. If you don't, it could impact things like your blood pressure, your weight, and even your cognitive function. It could also cause mood disorders and psychological distress. So when should you see a doctor for help? Dr. Foldvery says if you You've been having sleep issues for at least three months, then it's time to get evaluated. Some patients will present earlier than that, but most of the patients who come to the sleep disorder center have had symptoms of a sleep disorder for years, if not decades. Uh, and again, not identifying those disorders can put your health at a significant risk. And if you're not sure whether you have a sleep disorder, consider downloading the free smartphone app called Sleep by Cleveland Clinic, which can determine your risk. The app also offers advice on how to get better sleep. Nearly everything we do online requires a password, but it can be tricky to manage all of those letters and numbers. Today, Josh Osborne from Great Computer Deals in Pahrump has some tips for how to best organize and remember them. Hi guys, Josh Osborne with Great Computer Deals. It's time for another quick tutorial, viewer question edition. One viewer asks, how do I organize my password? Oh, this is a good one. Believe it or not, this is the number one issue we have at our store and repair center. People don't remember their passwords because they're not committed to properly recording them. You have three options. Number one, use a little black book to write everything down. It's a good idea. Number two, Use a software program on your computer that helps you organize and log your various online accounts. Great idea. Number three, use a smartphone app to keep you committed to recording and saving your passwords. Because who doesn't always have their smartphone on them, right? That's the best idea. Why trust a technician when you can trust a friend? Great Computer Deals is located at 1190 East Highway 372. Call us at 775-990-8833. I'm so tired, I'm exhausted. That <laughs> sleep study, we gotta talk about, well, if you have a Shiba Inu, you know that they scream um, a lot. And mine screams to wake me up in the morning. No, I have alarm cats. Alarm cats. Named Oreo, yeah, Lola, and Nico. Everybody knows Oreo. <laughs> everybody knows Oreo. Speaking of that, we're gonna be back in a minute with your Save the Pet. You're watching News 25, brought to you by Mountain West Lawyer, Injury Attorneys, 727-9500. News 25, local news you can count on. Well, if you're looking for an alarm cat, just like uh, Stacy has over here, we went out to Desert Haven and Darby O'Donnell Westerman introduces us to a wonderful cat named Lucy. Today's Save a Pet segment is made possible by Realty Executives in Action. Put the team at Realty Executives in action for you. Hi, I'm Darby here at Desert Haven Animal Society, and today we are joined with this adorable kitty named Lucy. Lucy is an adult female Siamese mix. She has these adorable blue cross eyes. Um, so cute. She is very, very friendly, has the cutest little petite meow. Um, she does have a skin condition, but it's actually something very easily treatable. Um, they have tons here at Desert Haven that they're willing to go and give you when you adopt her, but they are just little drops that go in her wet food. She eats it up. Easy. So if you want to come and see Lucy or any of her friends here at Desert Haven Animal Society, please give them a call at 775-751-7020, or you can look them up on their Facebook page at Desert Haven Animal Society. Bye, Lucy.
Oh, so cute. Well, every day when we try to make eco-friendly choices like recycling, carpooling, and using reusable water bottles, well, there are some more choices you could be making in our own homes that could be more sustainable and to save money along the way. In today's Ask Angie, Mallory Mysetich shares some great eco-friendly home projects to focus on this year. We all want to be more environmentally friendly, but it can be hard to know where to start, especially when it comes to our homes. Mallory Meistish, a home care expert at Angie, is here to give us her top tips for eco-friendly home projects. One key to sustainability when updating your home is using what you already have. Reusing and repurposing existing materials in your home not only can save the planet, it also could save you money. Before starting a new project, look around your home, take an assessment, what materials can be reused or upcycled. For an example, an old dresser from the bedroom can be turned into a unique vintage bathroom sink base. You can also update existing parts of your home for a fresh look without creating waste by reusing materials you already have. Instead of replacing your cabinets altogether, try giving them a fresh coat of paint. If your fabric couch is wearing out, first try giving it a deep clean and depilling the fabric. You'd be surprised how new your existing items can look when given a little TLC. Water conservation projects are another great place to start when making your home more eco-friendly. Not only will you save water, but you could also lower your bills at the same time. A lot of people assume conserving water simply means taking shorter showers and using fewer sprinklers outside. And while these help, there are some home projects, both indoor and outdoor, that will make a lasting impact on your home's water usage. One thing I've done in my home is replacing my shower head with a low flow model. There are plenty of projects to help conserve water in your home. Outside, you can plant native and drought resistant plants that require less water or switch to water conserving lawn care practices like collecting rainwater to water your plants or upgrading your irrigation system. Inside, consider switching to low flow toilets and faucets, which decrease water flow by 30 percent. Also, regularly check for leaks around your home, which can waste water and cause property damage. If you suspect a leak, call your plumber to scope out the situation. Energy conservation projects are another easy way to make your home more eco-friendly. One way to save energy in your home is to improve your insulation. Up to 40% of a home's heat loss comes from poor insulation, so this project can make a dramatic difference. If your home has poor insulation, try adding more eco-friendly products like wool or so soybean foam insulation into your walls, roof, or windows. Like water conservation projects, energy conservation projects help the environment and lower your monthly bills at the same time. When you think of energy conservation, you may immediately think of large projects like adding solar panels on top of your roof. While this is a great project to take on if you have a larger budget, there are also more budget-friendly options. One simple DIY project is replacing old lighting and appliances for energy efficient ones. Look for appliances with the Energy Star certifications and output for LED bulbs for all your lights. If you have a project in mind and are looking for a way to make it more eco-friendly, talk to a few pros in your area for their advice. Ask what steps they take to make their projects eco-friendly or request that they use environmentally friendly products whenever possible. News 25 Weather Cam is brought to you by Learner and Row Injury Attorney's Office in Pahrump. In a wreck, need a check? Call 702-877-1500. Ah, there it is. Good weather, sunshine. That's what I like. We lost some of the clouds from yesterday. And the wind, thank goodness. But Yay. I saw we have more wind advisory coming up later in the week. No. Nah. More weather update with John right after this. News 25 weather is brought to you by Dairy Council of Nevada. The splash of cream in your coffee, the dollop of sour cream on your burrito, the melted toasty cheese on your pizza. Undeniably delicious, undeniably dairy. Enjoy what's real. Hi, good evening, Nevada. It's John Kohler from the KPVM Channel 25 Weather Studios. Lovely to see you on a Friday. Hey, we made it through the whole week, and I'll miss you this weekend. But we'll tell you about the weekend I'll miss you about here in just a second. Looks like 67 degrees up in Fernley Pal in Carson City. They are under a snow and wind advisory still, so, uh, uh, you know, struggle on, folks. 60 degrees out in Tonopah. 
Goldfield heating up to 65, Beatty at 72. Feels great out there. 76 degrees is the hot spot in the state today in Amargosa and Las Vegas and out in Death Valley, California. It's just a breezy 86 degrees here in the paradise of Prump. Let's take a look. 74 is our current temperature. We saw as much as 75 degrees just a little bit earlier. Winds treating us kindly out of the west to 9 miles per hour. The sun rose in all its glory and promise for the hope of a new day at 6.50 a.m. this morning. It's setting this evening at 6.54. We're getting uh, picked up another couple minutes of daylight. How about that? Low tonight, 52 degrees, that's where we're headed, and humidity at 16%. Could that smell like cloud cover coming in overnight? Yeah, afraid so. Look at this Saturday. A uh, bunch of clouds, bunch of wind, 20 mile per hour average gust, uh, increasing to 25 miles per hour on Sunday, and uh, you know, change of wind direction. Uh, it'll be coming out of the north. Those clouds will chase out finally Monday, and things will calm down somewhat for the rest of the week. But look at those temperatures. Looks like we're averaging uh, an increase of uh, 9 degrees on the high side. End up the week next Friday, about 82, with maybe a little cloud cover, maybe a little wind. But it's uh, going to be a beautiful week ahead of us this weekend. Just kind of bear through it. We'll, you know, bat in the hatches. It's going to be windy. Back to the desk. Here's Deanna. And that wind's going to continue. We've got Pahrump Youth Softball Association. They're going to have a windy time. Opening day tomorrow. That's happening at 9 a.m. Petrick Park ceremony. It's open to players, coaches, and the public. So good times. It's going to be an opening day there tomorrow. Yeah. And also, there's a groundbreaking happening tomorrow. And that is at the new OHB Park. You know the fairgrounds down there yeah. off of Dandelion Street, right off of Highway 160. And Ironwood, they're going to have... Um, a groundbreaking and that is as well at 9 a.m. and that's getting ready for that OHV park 277,000 um, yeah. off highway vehicle park it's gonna be lots of fun we're gonna um, of course cover that and tell you all about it um, on next week's newscast there you go we hope you have a wonderful weekend I'm Deanna O'Donnell I'm Stacy Jensen good night good night